best gear is the gear you have on you. And what is up guys? It's your average gear reviewer here back again with another one for you and I want to say welcome to the channel. I know at this point I usually say welcome to the channel, welcome back to the channel, but in this video guys, I want to welcome you to the channel and I want to I want to just tell you a little bit about myself. I've had a lot of people ask me, um, you know, questions about my background. I have talked about my background in the past, um, but my good buddy, a uh, good guy with gun, you guys should go over there and check out his channel and follow him. He's just getting started out. But it, uh, he, his first video that he did was a video called, it was just introducing himself, uh, you know, talking about his history, how he came to where he was, where he pretty much is. And just, you know, about him. And I realized with all the videos that I've made, I've, I've never done like an introduction to the channel. I've never introduced myself. I've never told you guys anything about my background. So I don't know if that's something that you're interested in or not. And if you don't watch past this point of the video, I just want to say one thing. I want everybody to get at least one tourniquet. I want you to get a tourniquet. It doesn't have to be this one from Rhino Tactical Systems. Uh, this is a combat tourniquet, and actually I would recommend you get a soft tourniquet. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. They have tons of them. They're not expensive. This will absolutely save yours or someone else's life. Full stop. So if you don't watch past any further in this video, get yourself a tourniquet, learn how to use it, and carry it. And, and if this video causes one person to carry a tourniquet and use it and and it saves their life or someone else's life I, I will be absolutely happy if one person buys a tourniquet and starts making it a part of their EDC I'll be happy anyway guys I didn't want to take so long on that but I just if you have one takeaway from this video I want it to be that um, get a get a personal medical kit that you carry on yourself all the time I have a little makeshift one um, in the Practac gear pouch here and I carry it with me all the time. It's in my backpack usually. Uh, you know, I carry an extended ADC kit in the backpack as well. But a, a medical kit, especially if you're a concealed carrier or if you carry at all, a medical kit and a tourniquet, you know, to include a tourniquet is a must-have, guys. It, it just absolutely, you have to have it, okay? So anyway, if you don't take anything else away from this video, please get a tourniquet. Please learn how to use it. I'll put a link for one down in the description. It'll be an Amazon affiliate link. If you want to help support the channel by clicking that link, you, you will help support us just a little bit. We get a little percentage of that. Um, so, you know, but wherever you get one, get a tourniquet, learn how to use it, carry it. Okay? All right, guys. So let me get into the main part of the video. I, I just really wanted to just talk to you for a minute and tell you a little bit about myself. Um... My name is James. I live in Arkansas in Little Rock. Uh, you know, I've lived here for quite a while now. I'm a native Arkansan, although I haven't lived here my whole life, and I'll kind of get into that. Um, I call myself a native Arkansan, although I was born out in South Carolina. Uh, my dad was in the military, so I was a military brat, if you can imagine what that's like. Uh, any of you military brats out there that can relate. Um, so grew up a military brat. We lived in Charleston, South Carolina for the first I don't know, probably seven years of my life. And then we moved to Arkansas and I've lived here ever since, except for a short stint into the military. And I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, so hang on for that part. Um, let's see, you know, growing up, I was always an outdoorsy kid. I was, you know, I was a child of the seventies, you know, so uh, that was back in the era where you stayed out on your bike all day. Uh, you rode bikes, um, you know, you only came in when the street lights came on. And uh, you probably should be outside most days. Um, but we spent all our time outside. And since my dad was in the military, he served over in uh, Vietnam. He had some military gear that he had left over, web gear stuff. And uh, I adopted some of that and actually kind of built myself a little suspension kit. Uh, you know, like almost a load-bearing, uh, sort of like the LBE that the military used. Um, but uh, it was web gear back at that time. Anyway. I fashioned myself a little kit with a canteen and stuff, and I used to carry it around with me. Um, I was big into the Boy Scouts when I was younger. I was all about the Boy Scouts, stuck with that for a long time. Um, going up through high school, I played some football, but I screwed my knee up, and uh, that pretty much soured football for me. So I don't even like to watch it now. 
Um, that's how bitter I am about it. If any of you guys can relate to that, uh, former guys who have played sports, you know, it, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I, I played sports in high school. I was also in the band, so I was a band nerd and a jock, uh, which is weird. You know, um, play in a football game and then go march at halftime. It, it was kind of like a surreal experience. But anyway, I, I guess I was a little bit well-rounded as a kid. Um, right out of high school, I went into the Army. And around this time was uh, was when Desert Storm was going on. Um, I always have been a very patriotic person. I've always believed in America, in our ideals, and uh, in the American flag. You know, I just was raised that way, uh, especially with my dad being a veteran, you know. Um, and he never pushed me to go towards the military at all. In fact, he tried to talk me out of it and said there were a lot better options. Um, I had scholarships at the time where I could have went to college. It wouldn't have cost anything. But for some reason, my young 18-year-old brain was like, hey, let's go join the military. So... Um, I joined up right as Desert Storm was kicking off. Uh, who knew that would be the shortest uh, war in history? All through basic. I went through basic as a 19 Delta, which is a Cav Scout. If you don't know what that is, uh, look it up. It's anymore. It's not horses and cavalry. It's uh, mechanized. So we were in Bradley's mostly. Um, there is an air branch that they go in helicopters. I always wanted to do that, but I never could seem to get into the school. So um yeah, went into the military. I went through basic as a 19 Delta. And um, when I got out, I was uh, picked to go to Delta Troop there at Fort Knox. The whole time we went through basic, they kept telling us, you boys are going to the big sandbox. You know, you're going to the big sandbox. You better get ready, you know. Um, and then we didn't end up going. It was the war was over by the time we got out of basic. And so I went to a uh, Delta Troop there at Fort Knox. And uh, what I found out was Delta Troop was the Op 4 Troop. So if you guys aren't familiar with Op 4, Op 4 is opposing forces. And we basically, there's a big Op 4 um, center in Louisiana. I think it used to be Fort Polk, but I don't. they changed the name of it, and I'm not sure what it is. I don't want to say the wrong name. Um, there's a big uh, Op 4 uh, station there, and then there's a really big one in Fort Knox, which that was us. We were Op 4 for the uh, mechanized units, so... All the guys that were training to go over and fight um, in the Bradleys and in the tanks, it was our job to play as Russians or Iraqis, and we drove modified old tanks that looked like uh, T-62s and BMPs and stuff like that. And um, that was basically what I did in the military for 270 days out of the year. We were in the field. Um, I didn't do well in the rear, so I preferred to be out in the field. It, we did a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of really cool training. We practiced a lot of guerrilla warfare uh, against mechanized vehicles. It was a lot of fun at times, and we had a lot of leeway as far as what we could do. We could plan our own missions, execute our own missions. A lot of times we would go out with uh, four to six guys and just, you know, harass tanks and uh, take over vehicles and do all kinds of stuff. But anyway, we learned how to use all kinds of explosives, improvised explosives, um, you know, so I do have a pretty strong background in the military. I did not uh, actually go over in, into combat at any point. I was at Fort Knox the whole time. I'm going to be 100% upfront about that. I would never want to try to uh, have any kind of stolen valor. When people thank me for my service, a lot of times it makes me uncomfortable because I, I don't feel like I got to do what I went in to do. Uh, and that's probably a good thing. You know, I, as a young kid, I wasn't thinking straight about you know, the consequences of what I was doing. I just was gung-ho and patriotic and, you know, wanted to go serve my country. So when I got out of the military, I went through a period of time where I'm going to say I just really didn't know what I wanted to do. And at that time, when you were transitioning out of the military, there was not a whole lot of programs in place for veterans. So you just were kind of, you know, about six months in advance, you start filling out paperwork and two weeks before it, they go give you a few little classes and then you're out on your own and uh, the civilian world and the military world are completely different so as a kid coming straight out of high school in the military it was a little bit daunting for me at first um, it took me a while to kind of get my footing I would say in the civilian world um, I did a long time stint probably in sales I would say uh, different kinds of sales I did I actually sold cars for a while I uh, was uh, pretty good at it, made decent money at it, but spent a lot of money at the same time. So, you know, it's just that kind of lifestyle. It's the easy come, easy go money. Um, 
never made a fortune out of it. I'm definitely not rich. I'm sure you can see by the stuff that I wear and the stuff that I carry. I'm not rich. I'm just the average dude, um, you know. But uh, my purpose with this channel is just to share a little bit of my experience, a little bit of my knowledge, um, and a lot of the journey it really is what I want to do with this channel. I want to share my EDC journey with all of you guys. And, and a lot of you, if you go back and watch my first videos, that's when I was first getting started. A light, uh, you know, doing a light unboxings of like their, their sales bundles and stuff. Uh, that was so much fun to me. And I, I grew to love Olight and a lot of other brands just from, you know, buying stuff that I thought was interesting. Um, I will say I've, I try really hard and I promise you that I will be honest in all my reviews. I'm giving you my honest opinion and I'm not always right. And I don't know everything about knives. I don't know everything about gear. I don't know everything about anything. So, you know, I just want to make that clear that everything I say in my videos, it's my opinion. So you can take that with a grain of salt. You can take it for what it's worth and just form your own opinion of, uh, you know, what you think about uh, my reviews and stuff. But but it all will 100% be, I promise you, will 100% be from me. Uh, and it will be honest, always. Um, I've done some reviews of products where I contacted the company afterwards and said, hey, I had this issue with your product, um, like Swiss Tech. And they contacted me back and sent me another one out and were super cool to deal with. Kershaw is another company that uh, just had a really freak problem with the uh, Kershaw Iridium. And it, it, they were great. They sent me another one out before I, they had even gotten the other one back. So, yeah, Kershaw is an awesome company. I love uh, I love them. And they've got a lot of really cool stuff coming out right now. I just did a video. I don't know if you guys have seen it on the Outlier. Uh, it's a cool little Kershaw Karambit and I am just, I'm in love with this thing. I, I can't tell you guys how much I like this knife and I think maybe I've found my, uh, my knife type. So I would say in the future, look for a lot more folding Karambit videos probably because I'm right now I'm digging them. Maybe it's just a phase. Maybe I'm just going through a phase. You tell me. Uh, but yeah, guys, I, I really just wanted to say thanks to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. it. It blows me away a lot of times that so many of you take the time to stop and watch a video. It it really does. It keeps me going, guys. And if, if you guys didn't like the videos and you weren't digging what I was doing, I don't know. I, I, I think I would still do it my way, but man, it just wouldn't feel nearly as sweet. So to anybody that's liked the video, that's commented on a video, who's changed my opinion on some things and you guys know who you are and I appreciate you for it. Uh, you know, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, click on it. There'll be another one at the end of this one. Click on that one and just check it out and see what you think. This really is, uh, just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about myself, introduce myself and, um, you know, tell you what the channel is all about. So, if you dig it, man, give me a like down below. Hit that like button, you know, just give it a light little love tap. And uh, if you are not subscribed, guys, hit that subscribe button while you're down there. It's free. Go ahead right now. I'll, you go do that. I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee. Are you doing it? Are you really doing it? Do you know how much it would mean to me right now if you actually went down there and tapped on that? On that subscribe button. I can't even tell you what it would mean. But even if you don't. Thanks so much for watching the video guys. I am your Average Gear Reviewer. And I'm out of here. The best gear. Is the gear you have on you.